Welcome everyone to St. James on this, the second Sunday of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday. The following are parish community announcements. The renovation of the new parish center is going well. We want you to see this for yourself. After all the masses this weekend, there will be an opportunity for a tour of the facility to see the accomplishments thus far. There will be people with either a hard hat or orange construction vest to help you. Plus, you will be able to sign a wooden beam that will be used in the construction of the parish center. Today is Divine Mercy Sunday. Please join us at 3 p.m. for a holy hour honoring the divine mercy in the church for confessions, benediction, and adoration. We will sing the Divine Mercy Chaplet during this hour. Our guest speaker will be Sandy Spady. Come check out the beautiful handmade quilt made by a member of the EPS Auxiliary after all the masses this weekend. You can help support the moms, babies, and families at EPS with your purchase of a chance to take this quilt home. The lucky winner last year was a parishioner. The Boy Scouts will be selling coupon cards for local businesses after all the masses this weekend. The money raised will help subsidize their summer camp. We hope you can help support this cause. We will have First Communion at our parish next Sunday at 2 p.m. Mass. Please be sure to include our young communicants in your prayers this week. There will be a showing of the movie Nefarious at Creighton University on Saturday, April 13th. Father Boyd will, be, will host a discussion after the movie. See more details in the bulletin. As we begin this celebration, we invite you to stand to give a nod or a wave to those people around you.
Before we introduce our celebrant, we ask that anyone who has a cell phone to please silence it at this time. Thank you. This morning our celebrant is Tom, Father Tom Weisbecker, assisted by Randy Grossi. Our opening song and gather, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, number 483. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, number 483. Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And welcome here this morning. We today we celebrate divine mercy and just uh, how can God be so generous? He, Jesus died for us; we can be saved, and so it's something for us to realize the mercy for ourselves, but also for those of our loved ones. And you know, we keep praying for and amazing things can happen if we trust in His mercy. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge your sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you bring faith to unbelievers. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you bring hope to the fearful. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring love to the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest stand on earth, peace to people of goodwill.
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. With those children ages six through nine who wish to celebrate the liturgy of the word for children, please gather now with the leaders of the word. Dear children, the Lord be with you. Jesus, who is the word, loves you. Listen to the word of God and learn. Be children of the word, leading the way for others to find Jesus. The people of St. James now send you forth in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who own property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. The 
joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. this been done it is wonderful in our eyes this is the day the Lord has made let us be glad and rejoice in it A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one who testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the nail marks and put my hand into his side, 
I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may come to have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, today we do celebrate divine mercy. You know, we see Jesus coming back this evening, the first day of the week, which is Easter Sunday last week. And he appears, you know, he appeared to the ladies in the morning. Well, the boys were, you know, they were not faithful. They, they ran away. He comes back in the evening. And what does he say to them? You're all going to hell. I'm mad at you. I will find somebody else to do this. No, he says, peace be with you. He says it twice. And he says, go, who's, go into the world and whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven them. He didn't even give them a penance. That's not fair. <laughs> I mean, and then Thomas, my buddy. Where are you, buddy? Why aren't you back with your brads? You know, and, and, and he comes in there and he's a stubborn He's not German like some of us, but he, he's, I won't believe it. He's got 10, ten and zero. They're all, you know, dancing, jumping, drinking, partying. We see him. He's here. He's alive. And he won't believe it till he sees it. He's a modern man. I, it's got to be me. I got to see him. And so this, he goes on for a whole week. And finally, Jesus comes and says, Thomas, my Lord and my God, you know, today we do celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. It's, you know, I just think about, you know, the miracle that we had in 1978 when we got a, uh, for some reason, we got a non-Polish, non-Italian Pope, Polish Pope. What was God thinking? Well, he had a reason for that. You know, that John Paul II, uh, he was, he knew about Divine Mercy, you know, Sister Faustina was a Polish nun who from 1931 to 1938 had a, these apparitions of Jesus and he wanted to have a devotion to divine, divine mercy in the world. And she wrote her diary, which is 600 pages, you know, just, and she was a nobody. And yet he used her to foster divine mercy devotion. And so when we had a Polish Pope on April 30th, 2000, first saint or canonized in the new millennium was Saint Faustina. And he fostered on this day, on April 30th, 2000, this, this celebration of divine mercy was, was promulgated, promulgated throughout the church. And so it's, it's something for us today, you know, 24 years later, we're still doing that. You know, why do we need mercy today? Was anybody here a sinner besides me? We need it. You know, for every one of us is a sinner. And I praise God we can have our sins forgiven. And maybe our sins aren't nearly as bad as the apostles running away at the cross or Thomas for doubting. But we all need divine help. We need forgiveness. We need to accept it. You know, going to confession and my bad. You know, it's important. But, you know, it's also true that we need divine mercy in the world. Where's our world going? 
you know, it's, it's going off the cliff. I mean, it's, the insanity is becoming normal. And just, I mean, I, you know, I'm not going to get politics, but what they're promoting today is just insane. So we, we need to, to celebrate that. You know, it's, uh, the world is going nuts. And sin is being glorified. We need mercy. So why, how do we celebrate mercy? Well, that's what we're here today to do, to just talk about that. It's, we continue the climax of Easter Sunday. This is the octave, the end of the octave of Easter. Hopefully we've all been dancing all week. You know, there's a party, eating desserts, you know, things like that. We gave up for Lent. You know, really enjoying the fact that we have been saved. He died and he came back. And that's a reality. You know, what is that? I want to just kind of go through some of this divine mercy thing. What did Jesus say about why we have divine mercy today. He said, on that day, the very depths of my tender mercy are open. I pour out a whole ocean of graces upon souls who approach the font of my mercy, the sacraments of reconciliation, Holy Eucharist. The soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion that day shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. You know, that's a, that's, a, that's a sweet deal. The easiest, the easiest indulgence, plenary indulgence you get is today. On that day, all the divine floodgates through which graces flow are opened. We're drowning in mercy right here today. Let no soul fear to draw near to me, even though its sins be as scarlet. My mercy is so great that no mind, be it of man or angel, will be able to fathom it throughout eternity. We're going to just go ga, 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 ga. Every soul that in its relation to me will contemplate my love and mercy throughout all eternity. The feast of mercy emerged from my very depths of tenderness. What's it all about? Well, forgiveness won on Calvary. Yay. We have been reconciled to God. Mercy is ours for the asking. If we want it, we can receive it. Jesus' love for us is so great. You know, we have this image up here. This is in 1931, Jesus appeared to St. Faustina. He said he wanted this image painted. There's different images. This isn't the original one. This is my favorite, though. Jesus walking through the door, coming to us, the rays of blood and water coming from his heart. He's pointing to his heart. He's inviting us to him to take a, a swim in the ocean of mercy. Jesus, I trust in you. Trusting in his mercy is everything. You know, we, I'm not worthy, I'm no good, all this stuff that people say. Trust in him. Do we believe in his words? I mean, it's, again, his apparitions to St. Faustina are, you know, the private revelation. But, you know, there's somebody like, what's his name, John Paul II said, this is a real deal. The church has affirmed this, and it's just kind of, uh, it's real. We, we have the chapel of divine mercy. It's on the rosary. It's, it's uh, beautiful prayers. We have, there's, there's brochures on the table back there. If you don't know what it is, we'll be doing that this afternoon. You have three o'clock. Three, three o'clock is the hour of mercy. He died at that moment, and that's when we were forgiven. And so that's why we have our holy hour is to come here and celebrate that mercy. And we're going to have a wonderful time here. Uh, we have ador- adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Uh, we'll have a sung chaplet. We'll have four, at least four priests hearing confessions. If you haven't been for a while, please come. Immerse yourself in mercy. Um, we will have benediction. We have a speaker. Sandy Spady is a friend of mine. She's encountered his mercy. And she'll tell her story, which should be interesting. It's a PowerPoint presentation. It just, you know, it's, it's something for us to get. For one hour, could we just tell God how much we love him and take a swim in that ocean of mercy? That's one way to celebrate Jesus' love and mercy. Um, we, are, we are to proclaim mercy. You know, not only are we to believe it, but we have to live it. And it's something for us to think about. You know, what... How can I show mercy to someone? How can I forgive them for what they've done to me? And that's, that's, you know, 
as Jesus has forgiven us, can we forgive others? We have Mary, the mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. And why do we call her mother of mercy? Because she's a mother of divine mercy himself. We pray for sinners. And you know, there's promises of the, the divine mercy chaplet said in the presence of someone dying, all punishment due to sins is forgiven. Extraordinary graces. You know, complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. You know, this, this is amazing. Can we be that forgiven? You know, when we talk about going to purgatory, it's because our punishment hasn't been fulfilled. We come to something like this, you know, all punishments is forgiven. Our past is over. We're being baptized, if you will, all over again. That's mercy. I mean, can, can, can God love us that much? Can he let us bozos go free? If he can let these guys go free, peace be with you. Peace be with you. He loves us that much, even more than we can imagine. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, God the Almighty Father raised Jesus as a firstborn from the dead and made him our Savior. Let us call upon him with joy and trust. For the church, especially all newly baptized and newly received, that they find in the church both welcome and challenge, we pray to the Lord. For local, national, and world leaders, that they may never doubt the power of God's truth and love but rather take refuge in it as they seek to resolve problems and reach greater unity. We pray to the Lord. For those seeking an increased faith, that they will grow in certainty that God's divine mercy is abundant beyond human imagination. We pray to the Lord. For an end to abortion and wisdom, compassion, and support for people and organizations working for children and families. We pray to the Lord. For the souls of the faithful departed, especially Marcy Costello, and for those who have no one to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. For the repose of the soul of Milo Schleiss, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. For the prayer requests placed in prayer baskets and for the special intentions we all carry in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of everlasting mercy, increase your mercy in our hearts 
and hear the prayers we bring before you, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. As our gifts are gathered, please join us in singing, We Walk by Faith, number 583 and gather. We Walk by Faith, number 583. Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to a new birth, that, renewed by confess, confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times, to claim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Created rightly gives you praise. 
For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, <clears throat> so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, who blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint James and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely <clears throat> for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, the order bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's now share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
during communion, please join us in singing The Living Bread of God, found in your red gather hymnals, number 841. The Living Bread of God, number 841. Will those who will take communion to the sick in their homes please come forward?
There's two. Many are one body who share the one bread. Go now to those members of our parish community who, because of illness, cannot be present with us this morning. Greet them in the name of the Lord and of his people gathered here. Share with them the Eucharistic body of the Lord and assure them that there is here a Eucharistic people united to them in affection and in prayer. Go in our name and with our blessing. May the Lord be with you on your way. Our growing in God's space prayer. Heavenly Father, our hearts sing in praise of you. All glory and honor to Christ Jesus, who has shown us the way to everlasting life. O oh Lord, all that we have comes from you. You have given us a home at St. James, filled with faith and family. Thank you for these many blessings. Holy Spirit, guide us in this journey. Let us move together with open hearts. Grant us the grace to follow in the footsteps of St. James. Help us to work together as we build your kingdom here on earth. Amen. And let us pray. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to wish everyone a great week as we go forward. Remember, uh, after Mass, uh, to take a tour of the uh, Parish Center, see where it's at. We're getting close to, you know, to a couple months away from it, but you can really see what's going on there. And uh, you can sign the, the boards there to put to be, uh, your, your signature will be with us for, for the next how many years, hundreds of years. Uh, there's also uh, this afternoon, three o'clock is our holy hour for divine mercy. We also have, the, they're selling the quilt, chances of the quilt back there. There's a, a scouts selling the, some coupons. Um, and just wish everyone just have a great week this week. The Lord be with you. May almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Before our final song, would you please all join us in singing Happy Birthday to Father Tom. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tom. Happy
as we go forth, please join us in singing River of Glory, number 135 in spirit and song, River of Glory, number 135.